Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are going to take a look at creating images inside of text. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that in just a minute. We're going to go over several different ways of masking images using text and that will create this effect that your image is inside of text. It's just going to show in the area that the text is covering. What do I mean exactly? Well, take a look at what we've got here on the stage. I have some text down here. I also have this image, but this image has a mask. Now the mask isn't doing anything right now because I have it disabled, but when I enable it, you're going to see what it's doing. It is masking off that image, so we only see it through those letters right there. So let's take a look at how exactly we can do this. Go File, New. Now in the New Document dialog, set the width and height of your document to 640 by 480, respectively. Resolution, set that to 72, and the canvas color, we can leave that white. Hit OK. First thing I have to do is bring an image in, and I've got this image of the skier here, and you can see it's quite large. If we look down in the properties panel, it is 1,000 pixels by 799 pixels. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to go Modify, Transform, Numeric Transform. You can see the hotkey is Control Shift. T. If you're using a Mac, that's going to be Command Shift T. Select that. And here we're going to apply a scale transformation. Make sure constrained proportions is checked on. And we're going to scale this to 50% size. You can see that the new width and the new height are 500 and 399. Hit OK. And here is our resized image. Drag it to approximately the center of the artboard here. All right, the next thing we need to do is create some text. And I'm just going to type the word tut vid. And I'm using the font Arial Black. And I've just got the size set to 96. It is also bold. The reason I'm using Arial Black as my font is, is a nice thick font. So it's going to allow quite a bit of the image to show through, but obviously you, you can still read what the word is. Some thinner fonts, it's going to be really hard to tell that there's actually an image behind that text. So it's usually, generally speaking, a good idea to use thicker, bolder fonts when you're doing this type of effect. All right, one last thing I want to do before we start masking is I'm going to show you how to mask vector objects to text as well. Now, I'm just going to create a simple rectangle and mask that, but you can really do it with anything. So what I'm going to do is grab the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle that goes from halfway, basically splits the T, and then comes over and splits the D. So it goes almost the entire width of the word tutvid. And then I'm going to come here into my assets panel, and I'm going to select the styles tab, and I'm just going to use one of these chrome reflective styles. Let's just select this one here in the center. Try to pick, yeah, that's better because we've got a lot going on in there. And we can, we'll really be able to tell that there's actually something there behind the text in this piece of vector artwork. Okay, so here in this file that we just set up, we have a vector rectangle, our text, and a bitmap image. So let's get started and learn how to mask. First, this vector object to our text. I'm going to select the bitmap layer and just hit that eyeball. That shuts that layer off, doesn't delete it, just makes it go away so we can focus on what we're dealing with here, which is this rectangle and the text. Now, the important thing here, this rectangle is on top of the text layer, so if it is below the text layer, like that, just drag the text layer below that or drag the rectangle up on top of the text layer, like that. What we need to do now is make sure that you position the rectangle how you want it, just like that is good for me. And a matter of fact, I'm going to grab the scale tool and just make it a bit thinner. I'm going to pull the top and bottom in, just like that. Now I'm going to go edit, cut. Okay, you can see it's gone here from our layers panel. And now I'm going to go edit, paste inside, but what I have to do is select the text. Make sure you select that text, hit edit, paste inside. And you can see we have this text here with this sort of metal effect. Now, the problem I'm running into is the edges of my text are black. That's because the actual text is black. So what we can do 
to get rid of that is we need to make sure that our text is the same color as our background. In this case, our background is white. So I am going to select that mask and let's click on the fill here and just select white and see what happens. See that? Now it looks like it's just sitting there blended perfectly with the background. If we switch the canvas color to something like a dark gray, well then we need to select our mask and select that dark gray. And there we go. Looks wonderful. So that is how we mask vector objects. Now one thing that I do want to point out is if you grab the text tool, you can still come in here and make edits to this text. We can add a hyphen, we can add an underscore, we can type an entirely new word. Okay. Now obviously you can't see the entire word that I typed because we start to run out of space and because our text is the same color as the background, you really only see so much of it. But that's something to keep in mind is that masking that way, uh, you preserve what's called text editability and that allows you to come back in anytime in the future and edit what you've typed, which is great, obviously. All right, I'm gonna change my canvas color back to white and I'm just gonna grab this entire layer and throw it in the trash can here. And I'm going to select the bitmap layer, which obviously you just saw, turns it back on. Let's grab the text tool again, and I have all of my settings already set. 96 size, Arial black, and I want it to be black, the text itself to be black. I'm just gonna type the word tut vid. All right, now I'm gonna position this over the skier so that his little shiny goggles are going to be showing through uh, at some point in the text, that'll just you know give it an element of some nice color and make things a little bit more interesting for us. So editing with or masking, excuse me, with a bitmap image is a little bit different than masking with vector. Um, I'm actually going to show you two ways to do it here. Um, the first way, and actually, let me just point out that you may think that we can just drag our text layer beneath our bitmap image, we can just select the bitmap, go edit, cut, and then come over here, select the text, and go modify, mask, paste as mask. Okay, now you can see our problem here is we've got a very odd looking image back there. It looks like it's been converted to a grayscale and maybe inverted and all kinds of weird things are going on. So, let's take a look at what we can do here to keep the full color image because chances are you're going to want to keep the full color image. So let's go edit, undo modify mask, undo paste, undo cut. All right, and we do want to keep this bitmap image on top of our text layer. I'm going to select the bitmap image and I'm going to go edit, cut, select the text and go edit, paste inside. So, so far it's been the same exact thing as our vector mask, okay? And really masking this way is pretty much the same way as that vector masking method that I just showed you. And here, we also maintain text editability. I can use the text tool and I can add a new word. Okay, and you can see, you can see it. The reason you can see it is because there's more image to go underneath it. If I were to select that little chain link there to unlink my image from my mask and drag the image this way, you can start, you can see that we can start, we're, we are starting to see some black. That's because our text again is colored black. And when we run out of room on our image, we're going to start seeing black. So you are going to have a limit as far as how much you can add words or add letters to your word or whatever it is that you're masking really. But a quick way to solve that would be just to not downsize our image quite so much. But we don't really have much more room here on our stage or our artboard here in Fireworks. So it's not really much of a big deal here. But I just wanted to point that out. All right, so I'm going to leave our image just like that, and I'm going to relink the image with the mask. So now anytime I click and drag it, everything moves as one unit. It all stays together. So there's one way of masking. I'm going to quickly undo by holding Control and hitting Z a bunch of times. If you're on a Mac, you can just 
hit Command Z. It's the same as this edit undo, but instead of coming edit undo, edit undo, we can just use the hotkey, which is much, much faster. Now, the last way we can achieve this effect, and actually the way that I did it over in that example file that I was showing you a few minutes ago, is I use this technique. What I'm going to do here is shut off the bitmap layer by selecting that eyeball. I'm going to select the text, come up here to modify, and hit, uh, where is it? Maybe it's edit. Well, I can't find it. Right click on the text and hit convert to paths. That's command or control shift P. You can see, there we go. We have converted that to paths. Now I also want to ungroup it. So this, you can come up here to modify. I do know where this is. Right here, ungroup. And now we have a series of paths, one for the T, U, T, V, I, D. And we see we have an individual layer now in our layers panel, one for each letter. What I'm going to do now with all these selected, they're all selected, I'm going to go edit, cut, I'm going to select the bitmap, and by doing that I turn it back on, and then I'm going to come up here to modify, mask, paste as mask. Okay, so I've just pasted this as a mask. Now the really interesting thing about this here is we can apply some filters here to this word. Let's give it a drop shadow like I did before. I'm going to pull the bottom of Fireworks up so you can see what's going on here. And I'm going to hit Shadow and Glow, and we're going to give it a drop shadow. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit, like that. And you can also give it other things like a glow if we wanted. I personally do not want to give it a glow. But the really neat thing about this mask is it will inherit the filters given to it by, or inherit the filters that you give to the bitmap that is masking. And what I mean by that is, let's blur this. Let's give this a zoom blur. Okay? So come over here to blur, and it's all the way at the bottom, zoom blur. And we can just leave it at amount 30, quality 20, that's fine. Now look at what the mask has done. It's not just showing a zoomed looking image through the mask, the mask is actually zooming as well. All right, I can get rid of the zoom blur and we could give it a radial blur or a motion blur. Okay, same thing. Okay, you can see the mask is being affected by what we're doing. All right, so there's some really neat effects you can get by masking like this and then applying filters. So that's it, that is how you create images here inside of text and doing it all right here within Adobe Fireworks. I hope you've learned something from this video and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please go check out the site that's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.